from Real Ghost Stories Online dot com. Welcome to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again and thanking you in advance for telling a friend about the show. That's how we grow the show. That's how we get more ghost stories for you every single week is by you letting more people know that we exist. That's why we need your help. So uh, please uh, do so on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Pinterest, wherever it is. Let your friends know about the show. And right now, if you uh, give us a little bit of love there on iTunes and uh, give us some reviews, give us some stars on there, and then you email me the username you did that under, I will email you a link to a bonus episode of the show. It's a full, full length episode produced just for you as a thank you. Uh, for uh, letting uh, some more folks know about the show by giving us one of those reviews up there on on iTunes. And that's specifically where you need to do it to get bonus episode number two is right there on iTunes. So thank you in advance for doing that. You email Tony, T-O-N-Y, at realghoststoriesonline.com to get that bonus episode of the show. How are you doing this fine day, Jenny Bruski? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. Um, Oscar, uh, the zombie ghost clown guy, uh, messaged us back and he said, Oh my God, you told my story. Of course. I love to listen to your show and I hope I can find other people that experienced what we did. It's 100% true. I know it sounds crazy, but believe me, I wish that it wasn't. And really interesting, overwhelmingly, um, the feedback on that show has been, oh my God, that's crazy, but people didn't in general believe it. There was a couple skeptics out there that did kind of say, yeah, BS, but... Well, uh, you're going to have trolls no yeah. matter what you do. But for, for the most part, um, everybody really did uh, essentially buy into that story. And I did too. I mean, I think it was, I mean, like I said, when I first saw the title of it and just what went through my mind was, oh, this will be a good one. Um, But it really was a good one and a legitimate one, I think. It was just really dark. Another uh, piece of feedback that came in on on the uh, zombie ghost ghost clown episode says, I think it was one of the uh, the accident clowns. The zombie clown wasn't trying to scare or hurt you all. He didn't know he was dead, so he was trying to perform for you all. Uh, But I would have been scared as hell, too. It wasn't the clown's fault. He just wanted to play with kids. Scary story. I believe it. The visualization of the eye looking through the hole into the room where the kids are. That's the one I can't get out of my my head. I don't know that it was one of the clowns. I I really, you know, I don't like one of the dead clowns from the accident. The more I think back on that episode, and I, I don't think it was necessarily one of the clowns coming back to life. I think it was some sort of demonic force that was taking the form of the clown because they knew it would be recognizable from that accident that just happened there. You know? Yeah, I agree. I think so. Because I, I think if it were a zombie zombie, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be having as yeah. much thought. Or a ghost ghost. Right. You know, it just it seemed like it had some sort of real other interest Mm -hmm. in them other than you know just hey let's make a balloon animal you know it was it was beyond that yeah i agree i got another uh follow-up letter uh from someone who's written into us in the past is tony and jenny uh you read my story ebay mom uh is remember ebay mom yeah i do yeah and uh, i have something of interest to show you i took my 15 year old son and his friend ghost hunting at our, lo- at, at our local Vandergrift, Pennsylvania Cemetery last week. I snapped photos of uh, them with our Sony CyberShot 12.1 megapixel camera with the flash on. Otherwise, you'd just get black photos. We did not look at the pictures until we got home and loaded them on the computer to view. Anyway, the picture I am attaching shows my son's friend walking towards him. You can see my son looking down at the ground. He's shining his flashlight beam down on the ground, and it is clearly visible. There is a bright streak of light coming from his flashlight arm area, wrapping around behind him on the ground by his feet. It looks like a dog or animal with legs walking. There were no animals with us in the cemetery, at least none that we could see. We're very respectful when we're in the cemetery. In fact, my son is saddened when he sees the veteran's flags lying on the ground and tries to fix them. The time was around 10 p.m. Keep in mind, there are graves all around with American flags flying for the veterans in case you're seeing shadows and do not understand what they are. What are your thoughts? We did not see, hear, or feel anything while we were there except uh, that. My son's friend was spooked, so he went back to the car, but he's always spooked. I had tennis shoes on and stepped off the grass into the brick driveway. 
I started walking back to the car and heard the heel of a boot hit the brick behind me. I assumed it was my son because he was wearing cowboy boots. I turned to look behind me, expecting my son and his flashlight, but he wasn't there. He was still way up in the cemetery. I walked faster to the car. When my son returned to the car, he commented that his flashlight had gotten so hot, probably from having it on so long. Then we saw the picture when we returned home. Melissa, that's uh, eBay mom, Melissa. Uh, let's take a look at this photo here that she sent in. It does look like an animal. But it's like, uh, that's very hard to, it looks like a wolf. <laughs> well, it looks like something with at least three legs are visible on this thing. It doesn't look to be in line with the other gravestones. Cause you see, there's a gravestone there and there's a gravestone over here and there's another row there. It looks to be like in the middle of the rows of the gravestones. And I don't know. I mean, what I'd almost say, is because it looks somewhat foggy, it almost looks like the flashlight was picking up a reflection off of some sort of a fog, is what it. I would venture to say that kind of looks like an animal. Because it doesn't look like there's an actual animal there. It looks like a translucent animal of some sort, if that's what it is, or if it's just the fog of whatever this flashlight is hitting. Weird. It's very weird. It's very spooky. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. I mean, I guess... I don't know. I really don't know what, what to make of that. That is a very spooky picture. We'll put it up on the website. Thank you for uh, sending that to us. Of course, if you have a, a real ghost story or any uh, evidence of uh, the paranormal, you can always email that to us at Real Ghost Stories Online. Go to our website or email me direct, Tony, T-O-N-Y, at Real Ghost Stories Online. Dot com eBay mom I know we've we've read her story before what do you remember what the details of eBay mom were what would what was her story yeah she she would sell the stuff out of her house and she had a whole bunch of stuff um, and she wasn't real sure what of the items could be causing the um, the, ah. uh, the behavior but they yeah, also yeah, I believe yeah. their house was fairly new too so it could have been that and then she came back um she emailed us again and said that she had a wedding dress and then two uh catholic sick boxes yes the sick boxes yes yeah. okay i'm sorry i'm horrible with names and remembering people in that's general. why i'm here exactly yeah i mean i'll remember your story but i'm horrible at so melissa thank you so much for writing back in and being a loyal listener of the show and sending us that picture that is bizarre we'll put it up on the website and see um what other folks think of it and uh, feel free to uh, to comment on it that'll be up at realghoststoriesonline.com uh, and you can uh, you can leave us your feedback there uh, right there on that uh, on that story page uh, 855-853-4802 is the phone number to call in if you have a real ghost story you can call in 24 hours a day 7 days a week and you leave us your ghost story and we may play it back on a future episode here of real ghost stories online let's go to a letter kayla writes in i've had more than two experiences that i'm going to share but i'll uh, share more of them at a later time i grew up with five brothers and sisters it was very common for us to share a bed since i hated sleeping alone and would even pay them to sleep in my bed one night everyone was tucked in their own rooms and i had to will myself to sleep i'd always felt uneasy in the dark and this night was no exception I felt someone crawl into bed with me just a couple hours after I fell asleep. This person was molded to my body as if in a spooning position. Thinking this was strange, I turned over to see who was there. When I rolled around, I realized there was no one there. I ran upstairs and slept on the couch where only one person, human or not, would fit. The next occurrence that I'm going to share with you happened to me very recently. My husband left for work around 6 a.m. and I continued to sleep since I worked later. I was asleep and again I felt someone get into bed with me. I was trying to ask why my husband was home from work but I could not move. I felt paralyzed. The feeling was so real that the person was holding me so tight I began to panic as if an intruder had entered the home. I went into panic mode and was finally able to move. Of course when I did no one was there. Relief and fear came over me at the same time. 
I walked the whole house, and like I had thought, no one was there. On a side note, I have to take a break from your show for a little while. Paranormal stuff has always freaked me out, and I have been losing sleep over the stories you're telling. I look forward to catching up once I sleep eight straight hours without walking to what I think is a ghost. Thank you for your show. I do love it. Well, I hate that you have to take a break from our show. Um, You know, sometimes we talk about not just places being haunted, but people being haunted. Mm -hmm. That's where my mind went, since she's having the same type of scenario happen as a child and as an adult. I would venture to guess that she's haunted and perhaps by the same thing, rather than having two separate, you know, situations that happen to be the same exact Or is she someone who deals with sleep paralysis? Well, it could be, but she didn't really have the sleep paralysis symptoms in the first one where she was a child. That's true. Um, The the reason I go there with it is because she's talking about, I mean, it it does sound like it was, you know, they're they're both sleep related. Yeah. So when, when that pops into the picture, you almost wonder sometimes if... You know, someone's being plagued by that because people who who tend to to fall into that frequently um, do just that. They tend to fall into it frequently. It's not always just like a one time thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that that can kind of up the occurrences of you know par- or the thoughts of paranormal things happening. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I. I'm not going to come. I'm not discounting at all what she's saying or what she's she was writing in. Um, I'm just thinking it could be a possibility because the not mo- being able to move, being conscious, that does sound like a sleep paralysis type situation. But with with sleep paralysis, you know, most of the time you just have the feeling that you can't move, not necessarily the feeling of somebody curling up behind you and no no and i wonder how how much how that did feel if it really did feel like there was someone if you it was a feeling of not being able to move because that could very you could start thinking someone someone or thump something is holding you down right um so your mind could automatically go to the thought of someone is holding me or you can feel paralyzed two very different feelings one is like kind of a squeezing feeling and one is just Paralyzation. And see, from what she said, I I get the feeling it's more yeah. she felt like somebody was holding Squeezing, her yeah. because she even the thought of an intruder crossed sure. her mind. That's true. I don't know. It was something like that. I mean, what do you do to try and, and break that? Because well, she said there's more paranormal stuff, so I'd love to hear more. That's what I'd love to hear more of because yeah. it's kind of left us at a an edge of, well, what else you got? Yeah. You know, to try and determine what what type of entity it is that, that she's dealing with. Uh, do write in again. 855-853-4802. 855-853-4802. Or just go to our website, realghoststoriesonline.com, and write into us and tell us your real ghost story. Let's go to a caller from 855-853-4802. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, Tony and Jen. This is Mary. Um, I saw you shared my story about the tsunami victim uh, coming through to me when we were in Hawaii. Thank you so much. But you mentioned something after that where you were kind of wondering how do they know who to communicate through, like here on Earth. And actually, Tony, I think you had it right. There is a certain kind of light, evidently. Um, I don't see that per se. It years ago I'm old I'm in my 50s here but back in 1980 I was working at a hospital as a nursing assistant and an elderly lady coded you know she her heart stopped while I was in the room had to call a code blue and when you call a code blue I mean the room fills up everybody's in the room doing the CPR and the whole nine yards and I just stood in the corner and cowered, kind of just waiting for the dust to settle. And they brought her back and they were thrilled. And she sat up in bed and she pointed at me and she said, I saw you. She says, I was rising up and I was above my bed and I saw you standing there. You have a glow around you. And 
she laid back down and she coded again and they couldn't bring her back and she passed away and everybody i just remember wondering well what the heck was that all about i mean i knew of my abilities but i didn't really know how at the time i hadn't gone through my training and uh it was just very interesting because and everybody's kind of looking at me sideways like okay this woman with a special glow so i guess there is sort of a special glow or whatever that is seen um and through my training as i told you about privately in another call uh that i did many years ago i learned how to control it i can shut it down and nobody gets through and then there are other times when it's open and um, it happens in the, at the weirdest times and the weirdest places. And oddly enough, every single person that I have approached has been completely open and generally amazed. It usually ends up in tears or hugs. And um, I, I guess I just go with the flow and accept it and work with it. And, I don't charge a penny. It's, I guess, a gift to me, and I give it to others. So that's it. But just wanted to share that with you because I, I think uh, you were right on point, Tony. You know. So thanks again. Bye. Thanks for the call, Mary. That is so interesting, and it's so nice that she called back to tell us that. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking yesterday about the. Uh, uh, how there's a lot of BS people out there with it. And right. there's a lot of legit people out there with it. She's one of those legit people out oh, there. Oh, totally. You know, she's not charging a penny for it. She's just kind of walking out to people when she gets this and telling them a story. You know, that's that's the real deal. That's, that's you know, where you can tell it's a genuine thing. I can't think of anything that would be more fulfilling than being able to answer people's questions or bring some closure to them Mm -hmm. when they've lost a loved one. Yeah. You know, I just think that's amazing. That'd be interesting. We should try and get her on the show. Definitely. And and talk to her a little bit more about uh, her gift, really. Um, But that's interesting that my guess of the the lights, you know, because that's, I mean, I I don't know if I saw it in a movie once or or where I came up with that, but I just thought, well, you know. Like a touch by the fine angel thing? Was that untouched? I never watched well, that show. every time she made herself known that she was an angel, this weird glow came around her. Oh, really? I just yeah. watched Dr. Quinn. Oh, okay. And then, uh, and then uh, Touched by an Angel was on after that, wasn't it? I think so. Because I think I remember, the, like, on the next Touched by an Angel. You know? <laughs> and I would make some sort of inappropriate joke about being touched by angels, and then uh, that was it was bedtime usually shortly thereafter. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd put you to bed, too, at that point. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, 855-853-4802, 855-853-4802 with your real ghost story. If you'd like to share it with us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, we'd love to hear it. And remember, we got that bonus episode number two up for grabs for you right now. We need your support on iTunes, and you can show us that support in the form of a review and giving us some stars, okay? So even if you're, even if you're a listener of us on a different platform, um, if you could just log in there to iTunes, uh, it's absolutely free to create a, uh, a username there. Um, create the username, uh, or if you have one, uh, just give us a quick review there on iTunes. Uh, that would be very, very much appreciated. That helps us climb those charts and helps us uh, get into the uh, awareness uh, sphere for other folks uh, of our show, which gets us more great ghost stories to share with you every single uh, week here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Robert's writing in, I was listening uh, to the Haunted Children Asylum, and in the beginning you guys discussed the comment about energy staying here. My belief is when a person dies, the spirit stays on his on this earth, just in a different plane. Basically, earth is a waiting spot till you go to either heaven or hell. I have heard, though, that sometimes energy can stay after a tragic event, and then... The event just replays over and over. The ghost never interacts with you. It just plays like a video. If you uh, call out or ask it, it thinks it doesn't respond, almost like it doesn't know you are there. That's interesting. Yeah. I I, I know some people subscribe to that theory. Um, I, I don't know because my thought is, well... I fully believe you can, there's, there's a reason some people become ghosts and others do not. Um, but I don't know that we're all just sitting here in some sort of waiting room after we die. I, I would think that maybe if there's some 
you know, unfinished business or something maybe you're out there, you know, going on? Why would you continue to repeat the same thing over and over? And then when, you know, the maker picks you to end the rerun, then you go? I mean, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But there's all these cases where there is the repeated energy. There's people that are conscious that are ghosts. You know, I, I don't know what the hell it is. But. I don't know, and I don't know that we'll ever know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, my thought is, when we're on this Earth in, in our living form, why isn't that the waiting period when you're doing your life? Well, I think that's why what are you, I think that... Why are you still waiting when you're dead? Is Okay, maybe I misunderstood what he said. I thought he meant that our life here on Earth, our time on Earth, is our waiting period. No, no, no. You're still waiting when you're dead. Okay, well... Why are we still waiting when we're dead? That's my question. <laughs> And that's kind of what the whole ghost thing is. Okay. Why are they still here? In that theory, then wouldn't everybody become a ghost, at least for some period of time? I think that's kind of what he's saying. Okay. If everybody becomes a ghost for some period of time, wouldn't we be overrun with ghosts? Maybe we are. <laughs> you know, there are people, you know, that, that claim to be able to see and communicate with them on a fairly regular basis and see them more frequently and they're everywhere. So, I mean, maybe we are more overrun than we think. It's just maybe a lot of them are not able to interact with us or make themselves as known as others. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's one of those where it always will end with, I don't know. I, I know. That's the best we can offer. <laughs> yeah. 855-853-4802 is a phone number to call in with your story. Bryce writes in, when I was about 12, my mom, sister, and I moved into an old mansion in the historical district of Rock Island, Illinois. It had been remodeled into apartments except for the attic. It was padlocked shut. There's a small diner just down the street I would often walk to to meet up with friends. One afternoon as I was walking back home, I noticed a woman standing in the window of the attic of the house. She looked very pale and in the white dress, or in, in a white dress, and seemed to be looking out at the road until she noticed me and simply looked back at me. I thought nothing of it, but I did run into the landlord and asked if someone had recently moved in up there. The landlord looked stunned and immediately said, you saw her? I asked who and why, he looked so surprised, and he replied back, telling me an old tale of a man who owned a lumber company who originally built and lived in the house. He was consumed with his work and was never home. The lumber company was just across the street and could be seen best from the attic window, and apparently the wife would sit and nurse her baby and watch her husband off to work every day. It was never told how she died, but it is said her spirit continues to watch over her working husband. Now for the weird part, as if that really wasn't weird enough. A few weeks later, I dreamt of the woman. I dreamt I was in the attic and she was there staring at me. I remember walking towards her and I got really cold and then she vanished. When I woke up, it was morning and I was in the attic. I went to leave and found I was locked in. After pounding on the door until someone heard me, I discovered I had been missing all night and my mother and the whole neighborhood looking for me. To this day, I have no idea how I got up there, and nothing strange has ever happened to me since. Do you think you slept walk? That's my up guess. There? My guess is he slept walked up there. Maybe she coaxed him up there in his dream, and he slept walked up there. That's interesting, because wasn't it padlocked? Yeah, and he was padlocked in. That's even more weird. I know. That's a great story. That is a great, yeah. <laughs> Sleepwalking is an interesting phenomenon. Do you ever sleepwalk? Oh my gosh, yes. In fact, one time when I was little, like two or three, uh -huh. my mom found me. I thought the refrigerator was the bathroom and I was using the bathroom on the... <laughs> uh, you're using the refrigerator as a In front of the refrigerator with the door open. That so, worked out. Yep. Oh. But I was a little bitty kid, so sure. I'm not embarrassed. Yeah. I'll admit it. I did that when I was 24. Yeah, actually. I know, and, right? Uh, <laughs> needless to say, uh, those vegetables had to be thrown out. Um, no, but I, I slept walked once. Okay. And it was, it, there's, this is a very uneventful story. It was I slept walked downstairs. My parents saw me. They walked me back to bed. And I went to bed. No recollection of it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, that was that. Um, I have had some family members that have slept walked. Um, like, uh, uh, I have, uh, my, my grandparents uh, were killed in a, a horrible car accident before I was born. Uh, and one of my aunts was actually in, in the vehicle with them. 
Um, and they were little kids at the time, and, and because both their parents were killed, um, they were adopted by some family members and raised in a different city um, for the rest of their, their childhood. Um, and this different, this other city was uh, you know, three hours away from where the original house was. Um, and, and she would sleepwalk sometimes, uh, and they got they stopped her out by uh, by the road a few times and it, she was always kind of heading in the direction back towards uh, oh you know yeah so that's I, that's interesting you know that's strange it is you know I don't know um, if I had any other family members that were sleepwalking or not but what you do when you sleepwalk there, there's some weird tales out there about that. If there was any sleepwalking stories, that would be... I could, we could probably fill a whole episode with that. You know, what's interesting of sleepwalking is sometimes... I mean, you do have your eyes open, don't you? In most cases? I have no idea. Because sometimes you can't... You have to be able to navigate somewhat, or somehow. I believe sometimes you do have your eyes open. I'm wondering when you're sleepwalking, if that's almost like the sleep paralysis where you're seeing shit, too. Could you know, be. other than just, you know, where you're going, if you're able to, it's almost zombie-like, really. Yeah, but I don't know that anybody has any recollection of sleepwalking. They all have to be told that they had sleptwalk by yeah. somebody that found them or, you know, why were you doing this last night? Because nobody remembers. Has anyone used, like, sleepwalking as, like, a excuse in, like, a murder case? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's happened. I'll, I'll Google it. Wow. I wonder how that works out. <laughs> it wasn't technically sleepwalking. I believe it was night rage, you know, where people become violent in their okay. sleep. It, it's essentially the same thing. They're doing it unconsciously. It's like restless leg syndrome, but to a more extreme. Yes. <laughs> what the hell is restless leg syndrome? It's a nerve condition is it, that causes your leg to, to, to just jerk. Twinge and and jerk? Twi yeah. And Mine it, jerks sometimes. Yeah. Is that restless? But I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of fun. I kind of like that that small, that, that very quick state when you're between dreaming and being awake. And if you're running or jogging or jumping, your legs are like, woo! <laughs> and that's exactly, I make that noise sometimes too. I go, woo! And then she hits me. She's reading right now and not listening to anything I'm saying. No, I'm listening okay. to you. I can't tune you out. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm finding, there is a whole sleepwalking defense. Apparently, it's happened enough that people have, that, that there is a actual, you know, like the insanity defense, yeah. there's a sleepwalking defense. I'd love to see some late night commercials from attorneys that are just trying, like the ambulance chaser ones, where they're strictly for sleepwalking defense. Did you murder or harm someone in your sleep? Call us. We're the sleepwalking defense team. Okay, this comes from Psychology Today, so I consider it a reputable source. Sure. Um, apparently, the f best known historical case is Albert Tyrell. Um, in 1845, killed his lover, Maria Bickford. And. Um, 1845? In 1845. Jeez. Oh, and they used the sleepwalking defense. Then. They could have probably also used like 500 other things that like would never be allowed in a court today. And he was punished by having being leeched to get the demons out of him. There was a leeching. There's one from the 1870s. A guy killed his whole family and he got acquitted. Wow. Yep. Did he trade some pelts with for the judge or something to get... I have no idea. But How about modern days? Apparently, this is not unheard of. I mean, this is there, has been... Is there anything after the Titanic sunk where this yeah, was used? Yeah, here's one in the 80s. Um, Other than Arkansas or killed, Mississippi or something? This guy killed his wife and used the same defense. Yeah, there's one in the 90s. So, you know, about once a decade you find this occurring. Okay. Very... Very interesting. I wonder if, what the occurrences were of that being used in the 1800s or as like modern medicine and things like that came up. I mean, because I, I, I without a doubt believe that in some cases probably very legit. Yeah. But 
I can see like in the 1800s it being like really overused. <laughs> like one of those things like, well, uh, sleepwalking. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how you would actually prove that back then. I mean, now if somebody slept walk and they literally have no recollection of it, they would easily pass yeah. a polygraph. Sure. There, there would be no problem with that. And they would have they would be mourning and and have all this grieving yeah. going on that if they had killed they might have some remorse but they they wouldn't necessarily be grieving in the same way who was uh god what was her name the one that killed her kids and got off and were her and, and everybody was just hypnotized with her because she was remotely attractive was she the one that put her kids in the car and was drove it? Was it Chandra Levy? Was no, that? she was murdered. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking was... about... Um, are you talking about the woman that put her kids in the car and drove the, let the car go into the lake? No, I'm thinking of a different one, I think. Um, Gosh, it was, it was like last year and everyone was... It was like Nancy Grace was going oh, nuts about her. Yeah, the woman in Florida. She killed her toddler. Yeah, but got off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every day, like, she wore, like, a new low-cut shirt to the the court and yeah yeah that bitch um what was her defense it wasn't i don't know how the hell she got up with a sleep was she was she running with sleepwalking i don't think it was that um let me see i can't even i can't think what her name was which is probably a good thing god knows whatever happened to her uh, if you have a real ghost story, 855-853-4802, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Or you can uh, always uh, email us. Uh, uh, just go to our website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Name? Kaylee Anthony. Kaylee Anthony. Wow. That doesn't even ring that much of a bell anymore. I mean, I recognize it. I know that was her, but that was like a household name for a little while. Yeah, Casey was the mom. Kaylee was the daughter. Casey Anthony. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what she got off on. Let's see. It was nothing paranormal, I don't I don't believe. It was just very bad jury. Could you imagine being on that jury and then going out and like reviewing all the facts that you didn't see in the courtroom? Mm -hmm. And then going, Oh, yeah, we just we just let a murderer go. Anyhow. Uh eight five five eight five three forty eight oh two. Let's go to another letter that was written by Sin. I was the one who called with the interference. Oh. Oh, yeah. Let's see how this goes. Uh, <laughs> I was the one who called the interference, and I was sitting at home with my son at the kitchen table, uh, which he was eating with no silverware. He's only two. When I use anything electronic, this happens. I'm barely able to use a radio, and it never stays on one station and almost always does it while I'm on the phone and should have known better than just uh, emailed in in the first place. Anyways, since I actually have more time to email this, I can tell my whole story. So she's I, telling us she wasn't doing the dishes. I wondered if that was the case, if something did not want her talking to us. I don't know. All right. She says it and I still have questions about believing her. Just read her story. Let's read the story. Not many people believe me when I tell them I'm haunted or followed. It started when I was four or five at my grandparents' house. I was in my basement playing with my mother's old toys, and I found an old trunk that's been in my family for over 100 years. The rest I don't, I, I don't remember myself, but my grandma told me I was talking to someone, and I told her there were three people. And one was Bob telling me to do mean things. I wasn't allowed to tell her what. The next instance, I was seven, and my mom and I lived in a newer house. Well, I was a kind of kid that didn't like uh, nightlights and slept with the door cracked. My room was kitty corner from the basement door, and I just got in bed and laid down about five minutes later. I'd seen an old man standing right outside the basement door staring in my room at me. He was a, a, a detailed in white and lined figure with a cane and a top hat. As he vanished, I ran into my mom's room, laid in bed, and with her, I told her what had happened. And we heard the door creak open, and we both peeked up, and he was standing at the foot of the bed, and then vanished. And then when I moved in with my husband at 17, we've always heard someone passing the house, all through the house. We've had things thrown at him, like water bottles, dishes, but I've only had a toilet paper roll thrown at me. One night, we were headed to bed, and as he was shutting the door, we heard a loud bang. 
Well, the washer and dryer sat next to the back bedroom. We had set laundry detergent on the washer because there wasn't a place for it. But back to the story. After the loud bang, my husband opened the door to find the laundry soap jug on its cap still shaking like someone slammed it upside down. We're still having instances and try to ignore them, but they always get to me. I went to the priest and they've said prayers and have blessed holy water and tried to rub it on my head. I've been baptized four times and still have the same occurrences. I've gotten so annoyed I decided to buy a Ouija board to try to help myself. Worst mistake of my life. My friend and I decided to do it in my grandparents' basement where it all started. The board knew things I've never told anyone. It also stated that there are demons following me, a total of nine people, six of which are evil. I'm now 21, and most recently my son was attacked the day after talking to the board. My son was laying down for a nap, and so was I. My husband was getting out of the shower and heard my son yelling, Oh no, oh no. My husband peeked on him and found him on his stomach, arms stretched in front of him, with his pants completely stretched up and completely away from him. I have since then burned the board and the uh, activity continues. Believe me or not, I have numerous witnesses to occurrences and honestly, I wanted to email and tell my story for help or suggestions. When I was younger, I always felt depressed. I felt like I couldn't live a normal life and was contemplating suicide daily. I have since gotten over that and am now one pissed off mama. Thanks for listening to my story and sorry about my call again. There you go. Okay, I think you need to get a different priest and start climbing that chain. I really do. What climbing do you think? that chain? Yeah, if that priest doesn't help, yeah. go to the next person above him. Yeah, because it sounds like you're very, very troubled. And, and I'm not just saying it like from a mental standpoint. I'm saying it from their... I kind of buy her. I, I think she's legit. She's got stuff going on. And that's why I said I wondered if something did not want her to talk to us. It did sound so much like someone was putting the dishes away. That's what got me. Because I always... A lot of times if there's interference or static or something, that's what kind of gets me. When I hear the sound of being dishes being put away, I think I'm hearing the sound of dishes. Here's the call again. I just brought it up. This is her original call. We'll play a little bit of it. I'm just going to pick it up in the middle. And you can... Because the sound was throughout the call, wasn't it? Yeah, it was throughout the whole thing. Okay, so here's some of the... ...house. And it was the newer house. Um... I was going to bed and had my door always cracked open, and uh, I seen an apparition of this old guy with a top hat and a cane. Uh, he was standing outside of my door, probably about 10 feet away from my door. Uh, the basement was kitty corner to my room, and he was standing right outside the basement door. I was in shock. I kept staring at him. He would not disappear. Um, so I waited about 10 minutes, and I was only like 5 to 7 years old. I was a little freaked out, so I didn't move. I, As soon as he uh, dis disappeared, I ran into my mother's house, my mother's room and told her I wanted to sleep there because, you know, I was young. And you know? we waited a couple of minutes and heard the door freak open, and we both looked at the foot of the bed, and he was standing there staring at us. You're going to think I I'm nuts, you but I thought I heard something in that. Did what? you think you heard something in that? What? I thought I heard an EMF. You mean EVP? EVP, yes, and, EVP. Uh, I seen an apparition of this old guy with a top hat and a cane. Uh, he was standing outside of my door, probably about 10 feet away from my door. Uh, the basement was kitty corner to my room, and he was standing right outside the basement door. I was in shock. I kept staring at him. He would not disappear. Um, so I waited about 10 minutes, and I was only like 5 to 7 years old. I was a little freaked out, so I didn't... Like that there, kind yeah. of, it almost sounds like there's like growling yeah, or something going on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Old, I was a little freaked out, so I didn't move. And I was taking it as dishes being put away and dishes sliding around a table. I was, old, I was a little freaked out, so I didn't that move. That sounds I, not like a dish. He, uh, dis disappeared. I ran into my mother's house. Right mother's there. Room. Right there. Did you hear that? Here. I ran into my mother's house. My right mother's there. Room. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Top. My mother's room. I ran into my mother's house. My right there. Yep. Mother's house. My 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 mother's house. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, we apologize. We thought you were just like My talking on your phone and putting your dishes away. In the morning. 
would open because it's so repetitive it's like the same damn sound over and over and over that's why i was thinking dishes they're being put away yeah hmm and it is very very close to the receiver the way it sounds all right well ghost community what should she do uh if you have any advice for this young lady uh, please give us a call, 855-853-4802, or email us. Uh, go to our website at realghoststoriesonline.com, or just email me direct, Tony, T-O-N-Y, at realghoststoriesonline.com, and uh, we'll pass on the advice. Or, you, of course, uh, you can comment right here on the website at realghoststoriesonline.com on this page uh, of the show. What um, was her name again? Her name is... Stand by back to the top of the story uh kelly yeah you might use that in your yeah. comments or responses so we know that uh, you're referring to it. that's interesting so do you buy it i do i think i do now too i do and i think she's sincerely like afraid for her child i mean she's yeah. dealt with this long enough it's it's been a nuisance but now you know she's got a child that she's worried about i think there's been a lot of I think probably a lot of troubling things throughout her entire life that sounds like this probably attached on early. Yeah. And and whether those occurrences were, you know, related initially to uh, the haunting or if, you know, the negative energy that was going on, you know, to her and around her and just attaching on because of it, I don't know. But uh, it's like a breeding ground there for, for darkness. It's a cycle. I think yeah. if you're somewhat depressed, you become, you know, a target for it, and then it can make you more depressed. And so it's kind of like when people talk about contemplating suicide because of things like this. Mm -hmm. Is it because of the haunting? Yeah, which came, you know, for, yeah, which the came carriage first. or the horse. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it'd be interesting to get some feedback for you and, uh, and hopefully get you some of the help you need. But uh, there's... Uh, uh, I think you do need to go beyond your local priest um, and, and start looking up higher in the chain. You're right. 855-853-4802. Uh, 853-4802. Uh, look up the term demonologist online um, and uh, start looking there because that's where you might be able to start finding some folks who could uh, help with your, uh, your situation. Um, and also be sure to send them a, a link to the episode with the sounds in it, uh, yes. with that call, uh, cause it'd be interesting for them to take a little listen to that. Uh, all right. James writing and I do a different call. James writing. Hello. My name is James. I have many stories that I've known for many years and I'm still scared to my core. I won't tell them all in this because uh, I definitely want one to be good for now. Anyway, the first story, a man I knew by the name of Tracy. A few years back, told me the story of when he was just growing up and becoming his own man. He moved out of his mother's house and got his very first apartment alone. He didn't disclose the location because it was irrelevant. Anyway, he didn't know much about his neighbors and didn't plan to know much about them. He kept to himself for the most part. Each night seemed peaceful until he started to feel this presence he couldn't shake. He felt it for hours on end. The feeling he describes as pure hatred. And whenever it was there, he had, it had a purpose. The presence of evil wanted him to kill. Not just anyone. The old man who lived above him was this evil's target. He felt compelled to kill this older man. To him, for no reason. This went on for some weeks. The older man, he learned, was in the Vietnam War. He would crawl through ground tunnels to kill Vietnamese spies. The old man told my friend Tracy that he had done some awful things in those tunnels. He said he felt haunted by the spirits of those he killed. He would see their faces at night when he dreamed. They just tormented him. Tracy ended up leaving his apartment and felt the weight leave his shoulders. Tracy had later put the two together for himself and decided whatever haunted the old man must be a demonoid or something of the sort because he never felt something so strong possesses emotions the way that force had. Anyway, thank you for reading. I hope it makes sense. I'm more than willing to elaborate on something uh, that I didn't. I have more stories. Some are my own, some are not, but they still scare me. I love the show and the voices I hear. Uh, 
which means you and your wife. Okay. <laughs> thank <laughs> thank you, for you clearing that up. Uh, thank you and keep it up. We'd love to hear more stories, so please do uh, write back in with, with more of those. That's interesting where you have the uh, the spirits you know, of the man upstairs that are essentially reaching out to the people nearby to try and get them to carry out their will. Yeah, I wonder how often veterans have experiences like that where they feel haunted by the people they've killed. I don't know. It probably really, I mean, because the Vietnam War was, you know, very different than a lot of our modern wars, Mm -hmm. you know. I mean, of course, really depending on, you know, where you were in the military and what's, you know, sort of, you know, scenes of combat you saw. Um, I mean, there's, there was plenty of obviously close combat and there's plenty of PTSD that goes on with our recent wars, but obviously there was a, a very different aspect to that in the jungles of Vietnam. So I wonder, you know, uh, it's a good, it's a very good question. Yeah. You know, how often are, are you haunted by those, those sort of things? You know, not, and not just mentally, you know, cause obviously there's an aspect to that where you're going to be emotionally you know, scarred from it. Right. You know, but how often is it more than just emotions that are that they're essentially seeking, coming back? Yeah, they're seeking revenge. Yeah, that's interesting. Here's a, a, a thought. Can something, can a human that was human at one time uh, come back as a demon? I have no idea. I don't know how that works. You know, we've talked about that before where they can, you know, you can have a very angry ghost that comes back and you'd almost think it was a demon because it's just a, it was a, a horrible person in real life and it can be a horrible person in the ghost world. But can it cross over from being just a really bad ghost to a demon? Same with people on the, on a, on the positive end of things. Can you go from being a, a really good ghost person to an angel? You know, can you transform essentially the ranks if you will i mean uh, or or what the uh i don't whatever know. it is that's or can a ghost allow its ghostly presence to be uh to be taken over by a demon you know not just the ghost become a demon but can be you a, be a, possessed as a ghost can a ghost become possessed by a demon i don't know huh and then you wrap it in a taco shell and cover it in a pizza and smother it in queso and then- there you go. <laughs> pizza, pizza taco. taco. Yeah, yeah pizza exactly. Taco. With four layers of cheese and then wrap it in fish sticks. No, but it's a good question. Yeah. Can they can they change from where they are to something else? Yeah, I don't know. It's a yeah, interesting thought. Uh, Amanda writes in, this specific incident actually happened around four years ago when I was still in Morgantown, West Virginia. There are tons of stories I've heard about hauntings in Morgantown, like... The two college girls who run through the woods in Chet Lake looking for their missing heads. And also the Haunted Public Library downtown. It was summer at the time that I noticed something that even until now shakes me. I was staying with a friend on this day. Nothing of the abnormal happened until we went out in the afternoon for a walk. Walking down the dirt road, we came upon an old farmhouse. It looked to be in good condition. When I looked up into the window on the second floor to the right, I noticed what appeared to be a woman in old-fashioned clothing that resembled the same outfits of House on the Prairie. If you've seen this TV show in the past, by the way, it's Little House on the Prairie. If you've seen this TV show in the past, you'll understand what I mean. I couldn't get a good look at the woman's face, but her clothing clothing was clear as day. Even the bun she had on her hair pulled back. I asked my friend, does anybody live in that place? Shockingly, she said, no. Nobody's lived in that farmhouse for years. She asked me why, and I told her what I saw. What I told her didn't frighten her. Her reply was, oh, that probably explains it. With confusion, I asked her to explain. She had told me about how sometimes in the middle of the night, the fire alarm would go off, and when the fire department would arrive, they would notice that nothing was wrong. I thought about it over and over, and even though what I saw may just be my mind playing tricks on me, I still believe there is something out there that isn't explainable. Even until now... I have strange things that happen around me. I've always been sensitive to these sort of things since I was young. I have seen full body apparitions, heard things, and felt things like the time I got my hair pulled while getting ready for bed or out of body experiences experiences I've had while sleeping. Even my husband has some interesting stories about the apartment I'm currently living in. 
I have felt things here, but honestly, it hasn't shown itself to me. Sometimes I'll even wake up in the middle of the night fully awake for no reason and get a strange feeling like something is watching me. By the way, I keep my eyes closed during this time. I don't feel anything negative from it, but I'm pretty sure nobody wants to open their eyes and see something staring at them, even if you are just curious about it. Well, that's my little story. I'll continue to send you guys some more. I love your show. We'd love to hear more. I bet there was something in the window, you know? Yeah, I think a lot of times we just write it off as our mind's playing tricks on us. How often does our mind just conjure up human images at random places? Right. I mean, I've, I've been trying to look in abandoned building windows forever, hoping to see something. It, my mind should have been playing tricks on me by now. Right. But I've never seen anything. I think the time I do see something, I'm not going to say my mind was playing tricks on me. I'm going to think, well, odds are finally in my favor. I finally saw one. Yeah, that's true. And at the same point, when, when people do see ghosts in in settings like that, where you're almost expecting to see a ghost, that's where it stands out more. Because you're like, oh, looks like a place that could be haunted. Oh, there's a person up in the window. Ghost. How often do we see ghosts or at least sensitive people see ghosts on a regular basis intermingling and intermixed with everyday life i'd like to know that you know uh, crowded places where there's a lot of energy going on walking through a mall you know how often are there ghosts out there that we are completely unaware of and because they are in such normal form it's an interesting thought. It is. It's very like the movie Sixth Sense, you know. Yeah. I wonder if people can do that. I can just see that. I mean, I'm not... I, I, I've i seen things, but I've not seen like a full body apparition. Yeah. I want to see the ghost. Like, I, like I, what I want the full body apparition when I see one to, to be someday, hopefully. I want to see the one from the library at Ghostbusters. I want to see the woman floating there reading the book. Okay. And I'm going to walk up and say, get her. And this is going to fly up and uh, it'll be great. You know about what was actually the um, the inspiration for that movie, right? No. Dan Aykroyd had a house out in, I believe, Beverly Hills. And he had this house for several years and it was haunted. And there was all kinds of activity there. And he used that as part of his inspiration for helping you know, with the Ghostbusters inspiration. He actually sold that house to Beverly D'Angelo, who I believe still lives there, and Mm -hmm. it's still very haunted. The house originally was owned by Mama Cass of the Mamas and the Papas, and she actually, I believe she did pass away there. She choked to death. So Mama Cass is still haunting the place. Yes. And reincarnated as Hillary of Lady Antebellum. That's not nice. It's so not nice. You should take that off. No, I shouldn't. That's horrible. It is horrible, but she kind of looks like her. Does she not? No comment. Does she not? I shouldn't say that. (laughs) Although I I can't help it. They look very much alike. If you put the two pictures side by side, they look very, very similar. And that's all I'm saying. 855-853-4802, 855-853-4802, 855-853-4802. Malcolm writes in, me and my father went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania for a week and we love ghost stories and investigating them. There was only two days where we had encounters and first started, uh, the first started when we were going uh, to one of the cannon uh, emplacements and there were old cannons and we were sitting there and just talking like we're friends that are in the army. They were wearing their uniforms. All of a sudden, we heard cannon fire and the sounds of a ball going down the cannon and the rod going down the barrel of the cannon. And our friend started talking. And he is a sergeant and he yelled, hey, attention. And we all heard a soldier say, yes, sir, the 57th name, uh, the 57th arm main is at attention. We were stunned. And we heard gunshots, and the same guy say, Sir, they're coming in in thousands. And we heard a cannon go off, and then complete silence. It was one of the weirdest days ever for us. Uh, I'm going to say bullshit. It was hard to follow. It was hard to follow, and the... (laughs) 
I always put on here uh, at the end of our submission stories, it says, may we share your story, which you're writing into our show, so we're going to share whether you say we can or not. Uh, and it says, hell yeah. Okay. So. A little too eager. A little too eager there, and a little too short. But uh, thanks, anyhow. Good try. Most ghost stories are a little bit less played down. There's usually not full-blown army invasions going on when uh, there's a, uh, a paranormal activity of sorts going on. Where did this take place, did he say? Uh, let's see here. Gettysburg. Mm. You know, I, and, and there's lots of paranormal stuff there, but again, I haven't really heard too many Gettysburg stories where it's a full-blown invasion that's being replicated by the spirits. It's usually a soldier, maybe a little bit of sounds of warfare or something. I have heard there's a building, and I forget which one it is at Gettysburg, where apparently one of the, I want to say it's like a superintendent or a custodial type person, was on the elevator and the elevator actually malfunctioned took him to the basement and when the doors opened it was a full-on scene of a civil war era medical hospital people being amputated left and right i mean seriously saw that nurses running around blood covered um was that an unsolved mystery i believe it was so that's where i've heard that yes yeah that was an old robert stack unsolved mysteries episode I loved that show. They did such a good job with those reenactments on that show. Do you remember that? I do. I, I have vague recollections of that. To me, that was so horrific. That's why I still yeah. remember it, you know, and I probably saw that as a child. Yeah. You know, going back to the Unsolved Mysteries, um, you know how they did those reenactments? Mm -mm. They just hired local people wherever they were filming this stuff. Like, like they'd go to the town where they'd interview the people where the, the stuff happened. And then they would just hire, like, local community play actors to do all the acting. And, you know, comparing that to what we see on a lot of the more... I don't know. I, I shouldn't know. I don't know if they're highly... But, I, you know, what in theory should be higher budgeted shows, because there's a lot more advertising dollars going into some of these today, um, they were so much better. Like, the acting was so much better than what we're seeing on some of the, the shows today where they have the actors, quote-unquote, you know, reenacting the situations. Because I, I don't get into that very much because it's so hokily done. But the Unsolved Mysteries ones, I always got into. They always seemed done very well. Sometimes they're even done by the people who actually experienced the thing. Yeah. Which was always interesting. Yeah. It's like, oh, that is that same guy. It was always kind of fun that when they tried to find the actor that looked sort of like the other guy. <laughs> right. And like you, get, you see the interview guy and like, oh, there's the somewhat doppelganger of him at reenacting this. Or it was really sad when they would interview the guy and he'd be, you know, 5'10 and 112 pounds. And then the reenactor is, uh, you know, 6'2, 248 pounds. You know, and looks nothing like him. <laughs> you know? Is that the show that started your love of paranormal? Uh, I, I'd say it was one of them. It yeah. was it was between that, probably Ghostbusters is what really got me. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what I saw first: Unsolved Mysteries or Ghostbusters? Yeah. Because I mean, Ghostbusters came out in '82, and I was all of one or zero at that time, and. Uh, I mean, Ghostbusters 2 is the one I saw in the theater. Yeah. Um, and Unsolved Mysteries, it was probably, I probably started watching Unsolved Mysteries around 88. I was playing around kindergarten. And I probably saw Ghostbusters around that same time. So it's probably somewhat around the same era. I may have seen an episode of Unsolved Mysteries and then Ghost, Ghost, neat. And then we saw Ghostbusters or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's around the same era. You? What was, what was the thing that got you interested? I don't know. I've always just kind of been interested in it. I can't remember a single thing that was like really opening my eyes to it that I was like, wow, I got to follow up or learn more about that. I think, you know, from the time that I was little, we always had Halloween was a big thing we celebrated. And mm -hmm. so I think that's when I learned about ghosts at Halloween. And yeah. I mean, I loved, yeah, I loved Halloween. I loved trick-or-treating. Um, I, I mean, Unsolved Mysteries, Ghostbusters were very much part of the viewing culture of at least my kindergarten years by that time. 
you know, which is pretty little for some of those concepts. It is. But then me and my mom, we would go for walks around Rianzi Cemetery in my hometown, and that was just the creepiest, you know, place for a cemetery, and it was just the atypical, perfect, haunted-feeling cemetery. And I just think I was surrounded by so many things that felt creepy, but comforting at the same time that, I mean, ghost stories were like a comfort food to me. Okay. It's like, you know, like macaroni and cheese. I just enjoy it so much and it's just, it feels good talking about it. It's <laughs> fun. I don't know. It's bizarre. But uh, I think that's, you know, this kind of goes back to that era. There was a lot of stuff at that time that I'll just kind of, oh, you know, push that interest that way. And I became obsessed with Titanic shortly thereafter. But never really ghost things with Titanic. I never really... Yeah. Is there any ghost stories associated with? I mean, it'd be hard because the ship's gone. Yeah, but... it'd be hard. And I don't know if there's any um, ghost stories around Halifax, which is where all the the bodies that were recovered yeah. that weren't claimed were buried. I wonder, like, if the uh, Carpathia had any uh, ghosts on it after because they picked up a lot of bodies and yeah they did a lot of trauma that was going on on that boat on the way back you know and it's in its successive years of service if anything happened there that'd be something to research for a future episode so there you go that's our episode of real ghost stories online for today if you have a real ghost story please do share it with us you know the ways to do it and remember that bonus episode it's up for grabs show us some love on itunes write a review give us some stars and then email me the username that you did it under you email Tony, T-O-N-Y, at realghoststoriesonline.com, and I'll email, the, email you that link to that bonus episode, okay? So, until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>